there's also different ways that, that people can pray. I think for me, a lot of times my prayer though tends to focus on asking God for things, whether it's things for myself or things for other people. Um, that's not a bad way to pray. That's a very good way to pray. These prayers of petition where I'm, I'm asking God for something for me, prayers of intercession where I'm praying for somebody else who I care about, or maybe even somebody I don't know, asking for healing, asking for strength in a particular st trial, asking for a certain outcome in a difficult situation that might've come up. Those are all very good things to do. Inevitably though, when we do that, um, I think we've all had the experience of praying for something and asking God for something, and he doesn't answer the prayer. I ask God for this or that, or pray for this thing, for this person, and, and the prayer doesn't happen. God doesn't answer the prayer. And when that happens, it can lead to a, a bit of a struggle. It's very easy to believe, like, did God not hear my prayer? Does God not care? Um, if God wanted this good, like, why doesn't God want this good thing? Surely he would want this thing for me or for this person. And it can lead to a little bit of a tension, a little bit of a struggle in our relationship with the Lord, which is true, not just for God, but really for anybody. If somebody else either does something that hurts me or offends me, somebody else does something that I don't want them to do, or they don't do something that I do want them to do, it's easy to, to get frustrated with that person, to get angry at them. And in good old Cajun culture, that usually leads to a little bit of good Cajun gossip, right? Can you believe so-and-so did this? Or can, did you hear that so-and-so did this or didn't do that? And um, it can lead to, yeah, that inevitable murmuring that uh, I think is so prevalent for many people. In the gospel today, um, we see this taking place. The people in, in, in last week's gospel, they had just been fed by this bread and Jesus kind of calls them out. He says, you're, you're seeking me because you got this fill of bread, but I came to feed you with something else. It's not about earthly satisfaction, earthly desire, an earthly kingdom. I'm not about this earth, but I'm here to lead you to heaven. I'm here to feed you spiritually, and I'm here to give you a food that's going to bring you not just happiness here, but it's going to bring you all the way to eternal life. Jesus says, that's why I came. That's what I'm here for, and this bread is me. I am the living bread. And the people begin to murmur, almost like behind his back, like, how can he say this? Why did he say that? How can that be true? And they're, they're murmuring because they're trying to, like, almost like little gossiping, not trying to let Jesus know about it, but Jesus is God. He knows everything, so their plan obviously doesn't work. And notice when Jesus admonishes them in the gospel today, he admonishes not what they're saying, but how they're saying it. He says, stop murmuring. Stop dwelling on this apart from me. Stop gossiping about it. Stop trying to have this conversation with yourself apart from me, because that doesn't help. Because when we murmur, when we gossip, when we kind of talk in the shadows, we're not actually listening. We're not actually wanting a response. We're just wanting to kind of vent, to, to, to gossip, to, to let that fester within our own hearts. Can you believe that he said that? How could he say that? They're not listening to Jesus for a response. What Jesus' desire for them and what I think he shows us by his words in the gospel today is that he shows us what we should do whenever we have that kind of a struggle. The temptation is to kind of let that feeling, that anger fester against the Lord or against other people. When in reality, the best thing that we can do, rather than letting it fester and keeping it in the shadows, is to bring it to the light, to be honest with the Lord, with other people, to tell him about the struggle, to not hold back, but to be honest with God about why it is that I'm angry with him, why I'm doubting him, why I'm struggling in my relationship with him. These negative feelings that I can have towards the Lord. I think a lot of times we can feel, uh, yeah, like it's weird or inappropriate to bring these negative things towards the Lord. I shouldn't be angry at him. I shouldn't doubt him. I, but uh, my, one of my old spiritual directors told me this years ago, and it's always stuck with me. Like God is big enough to take whatever it is that we can throw at him. God does not want us to put on a mask. God does not want us to put on a filter. God does not want us to just come to him with the things that we are supposed to come to him with. More than anything, God wants us to be honest with him. Because when we're honest with him, when we open up our hearts to him, that is actually all that is necessary for him to speak truth to the places of struggle. God wants to hear the objections. God wants to hear the doubts. He wants to hear the fears. He wants to hear the anger so that he can speak truth and bring peace to those areas of deep struggle within our own heart. Because he knows that those are parts of our hearts that are weighing on us. And he does not want us to carry that weight alone. I think that motivation is what prompts us to gossip and murmur in the first place because we're feeling it and we just want someone else to feel it with us. We want someone else to know that we're struggling. Can you believe that they did this? At least they know that I'm struggling. Now I don't feel so alone anymore. It doesn't actually bring real healing. It doesn't actually bring real peace. 
the Lord, wants to speak directly to these difficult struggles, these areas of anger or hurt within our own heart, so that we don't carry that weight anymore, but it can actually be a place of redemption, a place of healing, and a place of freedom. So Jesus' invitation to you and to me, like tell him those areas of struggle, bring those things to him, and listen to what he might have to say. Jesus had to be a little forthcoming in the gospel today, but when I'm honest with God, I have to be willing to hear what his response is going to be and be ready it is to receive whatever it is that I'm going to hear. Because what I'm probably not going to hear when I bring God my anger or my questions, he's probably not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I got that wrong. Let me change my plan to fit that. That's probably not what he's going to say. But what he might say is, do you trust me? What he might say is, will you let me take care of that for you? Will you let me take care of this person or that person? Will you let me take care of this situation? I see your hurt. I see your pain. Watch what I'm going to do about it. I'm not going to sit in the silence, but I'm going to, I'm going to take care of it. If you let me, if you trust me, if you believe that whatever I do will be for your good. Jesus can only speak to us if, number one, we are honest with him, and number two, we are listening and giving him the chance to speak. And if we do those two things, God will never let us down. It may not be in a way that I want or expect initially, but it will always be the place that brings me great happiness, great freedom, and great peace in his presence. In the own areas of struggle that we all inevitably face, let's today pray for that grace, the grace to listen and the grace to be honest so that we can receive this deep healing that God wants to offer to us.